Welcome back to the Crochet Karate. So my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to do the miter dishcloth. This is a really unique version. So actually I started this whole tutorial and now I got to refilm. So we're going to create a starting loop and then we're going to create a base foundation. And then the second part of this, we're going to use that foundation to go around to create these ridges. So it's actually a two-step pro two step process. We have the body and then we have the striping. If you want to use the striping for the second part of it, you can have the striping just like you see. But in actual fact, you're seeing two layers of work being completed. Let's begin and start with the hanging loop. With whatever color you've decided to use, just create a slip knot and use a size H a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook in order to play. I need you to chain a total of 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, and slip stitch it back to the first chain to create a loop. So just slip and slip. And now we're gonna move on to round number one, so let's begin and we are going to start by just chaining one and all you need to do is inside this major loop just uh, put this around so it's with it and put 25 single crochets in there it's going to be a really tight fit once you start really making those work so put 25 into the center of this now so i'll be right back so far i have 15 in here if you need more space just push it around so you've got 16 17, 18, 19, and 20, and I need five more. So if you're running out of space, just push it on that ring. So 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. And once you get your 25 in, just make sure it's not twisted in any weird way and just slip stitch it to the top of the first single crochet that you started with and just fasten off. It says to leave uh, a six to eight inch strand so that you can use it for sewing later. So if you went over top of the straggler like I did, you can just safely cut that one down. And then the other one, it says leave about, it says hey, uh, six to eight inches, so just guess it and just pull that through. And there is your beginning one just like that. So I don't know what to do with this tail yet but I'm going to move on to the body and I'll just work my way through and just try to figure out what that's doing. So with the right side facing which is this side you can see that there's clearly a difference if you're familiar with crochet for sure and what I want to do is that I want to use just on the back loop of any single crochet. So what I'm going to do at this point is just you use two loops for when you go into a stitch but if you go into the loop that's furthest away from you, that's the back loop. And that's where I want to join. Now, it says to chain three. So one, two, three. And it says to double crochet in each of the next two single crochets. And we're just going to use the back loops. And then it says five double crochet into the next one. So this would be considered the middle. So let's put five into this one. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So lots going in there. And what you can do, if, it, if I were you and you were me, the middle one of that grouping of five, the third one in, I would put a stitch marker there so that you can see that in the future. So just get a spare piece of yarn and that'll be the center of your miter. So get that done right now. And then the next three stitches, still in the back loop only, are gonna be a double crochet. That will complete row number one. So we're getting ourselves established to turn our work and begin row number two. So let's begin. We're still going to continue to always work in the back loops unless I tell you otherwise. And we are going to chain up one and you're going to single crochet into each of the stitches that are here except for the one that's marked. 
that one will have three single crochets. So starting in the very first one, one single in each, stay in the back loop only. So the second part of the striping is using the leftover loop that you're see that you're leaving. So the trick to this particular one is that once you get here where the one is marked, then what I would recommend, move your stitch marker up. So the one that's marked, you're gonna put three into that one and move your stitch marker up to the middle one of the grouping of three. And therefore you'll always see it. And keep doing that, don't, don't be cheap about that because you may not see it in the future and continue just to single crochet the remaining that are left. When you get to the turning chain that you'll see with this double crochet, make sure that you go right directly into that chain work. So right into the chain, after you get the last one in, just go right in, don't go into an open space because that'll keep it open. And so therefore you'll have the equal number of stitches on this side of the marker compared to the other side and you'll turn and get ready for row number three. Row number three, just like how you started, you're gonna chain three. If you want it tighter than this, you can just chain two if you want to, because that's what I would do if I were you. Um, and then you're just gonna double crochet in the back loop only all the way until you get to that stitch marker, which is the middle. And then like before, what you can do is just put in your five double crochets into that stitch marker, and then you'll move that stitch marker up to the third one. Okay, so there's the stitch marker there, and we're gonna put five here, so one, two, three, four, five and move that stitch marker up to the middle one of the grouping of five and then carry on on this side of one double crochet in each all the way to the end I'm going to demonstrate rows number one and two because you're going to continue rows number one and two until um, you have it done eight times so there will be 20 rows in all by the time you're done. Okay, so let's go through rows number two and three one more time. Okay, turn your work and let's do row number two. You're going to chain up one and working in the back loops only, and you're gonna just single crochet yourself all the way until you get to that stitch marker again. You can see that once you understand these stitch markers, you can just put on the TV and enjoy this project because the stitch marker is telling you what to do without having to excessively count. So in that one, you're gonna put three single crochets in that one and move that stitch marker up immediately. If you think you can identify it later and don't wanna do the stitch marker, you are the artist, you know what's best for you. And then single crochet yourself all the way to the end of the row. So that's repeating a row number two. Okay, and then just go, make sure you go into that turning chain as well. Don't forget that so you don't miss one. Now let's turn your work and do number three. So three is what you already know. I would chain two instead of three. It'll keep it tighter. And then starting in the next one, you're going to double crochet in the back loop only again. And then what are you gonna do when you get to the stitch marker? Did you say that you're gonna put five double crochets? Because if you did, you're right today. So you can make this dish cloth as long or as short as you want. You are the artist, you decide. So at the stitch marker, you put in your five double crochet. And then move your stitch marker to which one? Yes, the middle one, which is the third one. Okay and then continue to go on the back loops only to the other side. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna just uh, recap this in a second and then I'll show you the striping part, which will be next and I'll change out my yarn just to make sure it's clear on what you're doing. Cause I don't know what I'm doing at this point, <laughs> but we will figure it out together, right? It's a community after all, I'll be right back. So I've now have this done. So you can see it's gonna get wider and wider. There's a total of 20 rows. And if it's easier for you to count, each one of these ridges in this is two. So you can say two, four, six, 
who are two four six eight who do you appreciate and you can go as long as you want to go there's only 20 rows and then at the end of it you're going to fasten off and then what they're suggesting is to change the color to something else to make it a little bit more interesting for yourself you want to weave in your ends as you go which i will demonstrate that at the end and i'm going to leave my stitch marker into position but we're going to start with the striping with row number one next so now i gotta go <laughs> get a different color yarn i'll be right back before we continue i would like to get rid of the loose ends just to get it out of your way and so just take a tapestry needle and just turn it to the back side and just weave it through. This is something you will use, so take your time. Just don't go between the plies, just, um, sorry, between the strands, actually separate the plies as well. So make sure it really gets stuck in there. And it's even, even advantageous if you just weave it through the existing yarn, you just drag through as well, just to really get it stuck and weave in any loose ends that you'll have. And we're gonna move on into the striping next. We're now ready to move on to the striping. This is the right side facing up. I can tell that by the circle because you can see the other side. And what we need to do is turn it like this, upside down towards you and flip upside down. So you're on the wrong side and we're gonna start here on the back loops or on the front loops that are existing here on row number one. So let's begin that next. We wanna start with the existing loops that you can see right here. And you're going to start with the first one. You don't need to count these loops. That's the nice thing about this whole other part. So you're just going to attach it. And what I would do is a single crochet um, attaching here. So just put it on, pull through, and see the two? Pull through the two, and that's a standing single crochet. It'll look nicer as well. Put this strand so it's underneath of the stitches and just kind of fold it in a way that those stitches just jump out at you. And you're just going to single crochet yourself all the way across. Even across the middle, you don't need to worry about counting. If you see a stitch, throw a stitch in. And once you have enough of that buried in, you can just toss that aside and then just use your tapestry needle to hide more of it later. So just gliding it all the way across to the other side. The trick about this is that we are going to turn it at the end, but we're gonna to go to the opposite side of the work. Okay, so you're gonna go right to the very end. And then we're gonna turn our work like this. And then look, you're gonna come across here. So just turn and then just glide single crochet across and follow it just make sure on the ends you leave a little bit of slack so that it can it doesn't change the shaping of your miter and what you're doing is you're putting some extra texture in here with your yarn so you go all the way across do you hear me counting you shouldn't be I do talk to myself a lot though okay and then we are going to then get to the other side and then what are we going to do if you said we're going to turn it again that's the right answer if you said something else that's not so right <laughs> okay so you're going to get all the way through here and you're going to notice that it's a step down right this is higher than this you're going to turn your work give it a little bit of slack and then just start following here and then you're just gliding. So this whole section you're doing is that you're making your way all the way down the dishcloth just by turning it back and forth and looking for the available loops to be able to do this and you're creating that texture as you see. So go all the way down in the same motion and I will be right back in a moment. You'll obviously go a long, longer way than this because I'm just doing a small sample and you can come on your last row and just do like the front loop of the last row if you'd like to. It's up to you. So just finish your last row just doing that and I'll be right back. We're gonna fasten off at the end of this row. Coming all the way across on my last row and everything is in and I'm officially done this section, but it's suggesting to do one more thing and I have to weave in my ends yet, but it's telling us that we need to do some surface overlay on the right side of this so we have to just check which side is the right side and we can look at it okay this is the right side so it's asking us to do 
surface overlay right here. It's not a big deal. I'll show you what that is. To make it look more finished, you're going to create a slip knot and you'll secure that tail in later. And instead, what you want to do is you're only going to play within the seven stitches that you used. Remember that we did three stitches and then we put five into one and then three. So it's telling us that we want to do surface overlay. To start this process, you were going to put the hook into the project right here. Okay, so you're going in between the stitches and you're going to put the loop on. You got to pretend your hand is a sewing machine at this point. And you're going to pull that loop through. And then with your hand in behind, you're going to go into the next space that's available to you and going in and grab the loop from behind and pull it through that beginning loop. And then you'll come into the next one, pull through and through. So the trick is, is to keep the yarn on the back of the project to do surface overlay. I really like surface overlay. It's really can make some really fun ideas. So you're just going to work your way all the way across and this will make the top look finished. And when you get to the other side here, just secure in your tail. Okay. So you're going to pull through make it look like the other side that you started with and then just pull it through and then with your tapestry needle just like i showed you before just weave your yarn in and out a total of three times and then i would uh, do it on the back side here just within this section so just uh, drag the yarn tails through just these colors and then any other yarn tails that you have if you haven't already secured them in just make sure that you do weave in your ends with the tapestry needle because this is a usable item if you're just going to keep it for more decoration then maybe you don't have to be as careful but i would do it if i were you get it done get it over with and you'll notice that both sides will have the texture using this concept so i have never seen anything like this so hopefully you enjoyed today's tutorial you can let me know in the comments below we'll see you bye, -bye.